if you just look at a tree or you look at like a flower, like the forms within it are so beautiful. It's really a product of all the forces acting upon it. And how all these things combine together to get this like incredible emergent process of, you know, millions to billions of cells cooperating together to give rise to a, a cohesive form. And I was like, how can I capture kind of the essence of that process by just the complexity of the biological systems and their beauty? I think that's where computers complement the human creative process. And they create a different type of beauty that's hard for humans to make on their own. I am Joel Simon. I am currently a tool developer and artist. I think of my work as somewhere between art, design, and research. All of my stuff was motivated by this idea of generative design tools where, you know, the final result isn't encoded, represented somewhere, but there's kind of simple rules going all the way down to kind of basic physics that kind of interact and give rise to more and more complicated forms. The best way to learn about that is, you know, through biological systems that have done this. Arguably most of nature is kind of the result of an emergent process. For creating that kind of beauty, you have to understand the systems that give rise to it. With the Coral Project, I created this generative growth algorithm, which is kind of a actually general purpose 3D growth algorithm. And so it actually uses these biologically motivated components in a way to grow its own form. You know, in corals, they're polyps, it's a colony of polyps. And each one has its own little brain. And by each one having the same brain with different local input, short range signaling, long range signaling, memory, cell differentiation, you get a huge diversity of emergent sophisticated forms that could have unlimited number of vertices to them. Or if I had sculpted them, I think they'd be less beautiful because the process behind them would be very different. For me, I think it captured a lot of what I was seeking out to do with like that awe, that sublime of, of a generative system. Coming from the corals, I actually was thinking a lot about representations for genetic algorithms. At the same time, I was interested in GANs. They are a generative adversarial network. Basically, they're a setup where you have two networks, where the first one is trying to fool the second with images, and the second network is trying to discriminate which images are real or not. So with GANs, every image is basically represented with a bunch of numbers. And if you average the numbers that represent two images, the resulting image will somehow look like the average of those two images as well. And that's a really powerful property because anything that can have crossover and mutation, you can apply a gen genetic algorithm to. And I was like, oh, someone needs to apply these ideas and like, they just belong together. And no one else is doing it, so I guess I have to. And that was the inspiration for Gambreeder. There's three ways of kind of editing an image. You can either have kind of children, which are asexual reproduction, and you get kind of random variants of it. You have crossbreeding, where you can have basically sexual reproduction and mix it with another image. And then the third way is you can tweak the genes of the image directly, almost like CRISPR. And so a lot of the images are somewhere between real and I would say resemble the real world, but aren't quite in kind of this uncanny aesthetic. And I created this new version now called Art Breeder. So I've trained a bunch of custom models on portraits, on landscapes, there's one on album art, and then other users can upload their own models. I mean, in a sense, you are the selective presser and you learn how to apply that presser to guide the system. And I think that's the power of Gambreeder. I get to see the system where like tens of thousands of people have like created all these things collaboratively. And it's through that kind of relationship between individuals and the larger collective that you, I think, get really powerful system of emergence. You know, everyone needs to find inspiration somehow. And often we have our own processes to do that. And so I think a lot of design is inspired by the results of growth and evolution. But I think actually the process is just as beautiful as the results because the process gives rise to some of that beauty that might otherwise be impossible to comprehend.